presenting The Whisperer, starring Carlton Young. The Whisperer, a brilliant man who, losing his voice in an accident which crushed his vocal cords, worked his way deep within the crime syndicate to help destroy it from within. To the underworld, his familiar rattling hiss is the voice of authority to be obeyed without question. Then, a miracle of surgery performed by Dr. Benjamin Lee restored his natural voice, enabling him to resume his real identity. Now, as Philip Galt's brilliant young attorney, he skirts the thin edges of death living his dual role. For, as the whisperer, he sets in motion the forces of the syndicate in Central City. Then, as Philip Galt uses his knowledge to fight the organized network of crime which seeks to control the fate of millions in cities and towns across the nation. The only person besides Dr. Lee who knows the Whisperer's real identity is Dr. Lee's nurse, Ellen Norris. Now, on her day off, she listens as Philip Galt uses his Whisperer's voice to report back to the syndicate. Instructions given to Porter will report back when he completes his mission. Bill! Not George Zimmerman, the furniture dealer. That's only a blind, Ellen. Zimmerman is the syndicate's top man in the bookie division. Every dollar wagered finds its way to him. He keeps the local share and sends the rest to New York. But I know him. He comes in for calcium shots. Well, the syndicate is substituting lead for calcium. Why is he in trouble? Well, the Treasury Department has established that his income was $200,000, and he only declared 50000 But if he sent the rest to New York, it really isn't his. That's true. But if he tells who he sent it to... It uncovers someone higher up in the syndicate. Right. He's a weak man who will probably turn state's evidence. That's why they've ordered his death. But who's Bradbury? A silent partner of Zimmerman's who deserves anything that happens to him. Well, they'll never be able to kill him while they're in jail. No place is safe when the syndicate decides a man is to die. That's why, as the whisperer, I'm going to warn Lieutenant Denvers. Lieutenant Denvers? Double your guard on Bradbury and Zimmerman. Hey, who is it? Otherwise, they'll be killed. Oh, what kind of a trick is... Will he take your warning? Can't afford to take chances, but just to be sure... How would you like to run down to police headquarters in about an hour? I'll be ready. And I shall woe my trusty seat outside, and the fellow in the wrinkled suit and beneath the wilted chrysanthemum will be I. One hour later in the jail, John Bradbury and George Zimmerman, the men marked for death, sit silently. Then as Lieutenant Denvers comes down between the cell tiers, Zimmerman crosses to the cell bars and calls softly. Lieutenant Denvers... Huh? Yes, Zimmerman. Uh, look, I've been thinking this thing over. I'm not admitting anything, but suppose I had information of value to the government. I'm a police lieutenant. I don't make any deal. Well, frankly, I'm afraid. If I take the rap, it means the loss of my reputation and the resulting shame to my family. Well, you should have thought of that sooner. But if I turn state's evidence... You may wind up standing on the river bottom with your feet in a barrel of cement and the paddle wheels of a river steamer knocking your hat off. Who said next time try the train? Yeah. Stretch out on that bus. Well, nighty night. Remember, if you hear any strange noises, it'll be Gabriel going his He's really got a snoop full. I wish I were that happy. Zimmerman, you're in a spot. No matter what you decide to do, I doubt if you'll ever be happy again. Lieutenant? Huh? Oh, hello, Galt, Miss Norris. Hello, Lieutenant. Well, what do you want? Oh, you don't seem to be your own chipper self. Uh, there's always some screwball making with the foolishness. Some bird calls me up, whispers to me there's going to be an attempt made on two of my prisoners. Did you double your guard? How'd you know that's what he wanted? Well, that would seem the natural precaution. Oh, yes. Lieutenant? Yeah? Those kids are here with Mrs. Barwise to tour the jail. What kids? 8th Street Elementary. Is that Barwise woman there? Put her on. Uh, talk right into this, Miss Barwise. Hello! Move back, lady. You're blasted. So are you. That'll hold you, Lieutenant. Uh, what's this all about? Last night over the radio, the mayor invited everyone to tour the municipal offices. My students have wanted to see his jail, so I'm all not right. All right, lady. All right. Sergeant? Yes, Lieutenant? Show him around. The works? The works. Wish that two-headed mayor had to 
Oh, what's the use? Lieutenant, I'd like to talk with George Zimmerman. Huh? What for? Well, after all, I'm a lawyer. All right, you can go, but she stays here. Oh, please let me go, too, Lieutenant. I'll remove the submachine gun from my right stocking, the stiletto from my left, and the hand grenade. All right, all right, all right. Stop pulling my leg. <laughs> They're up on the fifth floor. Wait five minutes, I'll take you up. I didn't take the warning seriously, but I doubled the guards just to be safe. Sounds like the Pied Piper of Policeman is touring the fifth floor. He had no business bringing those kids up here. You said the works, Lieutenant. Sergeant! Sergeant, make those kids pipe down. You try it, Lieutenant. All right. I've always wondered where Banshee's come from. Now I know. Who's in charge of these hoodlums? Here I am, down at the end of the room. Lady, please, tell them to shut up or get out. But the mayor... Hang the mayor! You too! Now get these cowboys quiet or I'll, I'll, I'll take their toy guns away and make them eat them. Yes, sir. Get that kid away from that window. Yes, of course. Johnny, be careful. Oh, Jesus. Looks like I broke it myself. That does it. Sergeant, get him out. Out, out, All out. All right, kid, out. move along. Come on, now into the elevator. You have it. The out. mayor is certainly going to hear about this. The ma- out. <laughs> oh, Lieutenant, I suggest you get a book on child psychology. Uh, I suggest you get a shillelagh. Shillelagh? I like Miss Norris's suggestion best. <laughs> All right, this way. Help! Help! What's that? Coming from down the corridor. Lieutenant Edwards, you've got to get me out of here. All right, pipe down now, Zimmerman. No one can hurt you here. Oh, no? Look. Huh? Bradbury. Oh. Shot right between the eyes. Well, that's his. Let me shot right in my own jail. Well, Lieutenant, you can't lock us in here. I'm afraid he's already done it, Ellen. But why? Because whoever murdered Bradbury is still on this floor. Phil, did Porter kill Bradbury? I'm sure of it. He used a gun with a silencer, which was covered with a noise made by the kids in the breaking window. But which one is Porter? I've never seen him. But when the lieutenant finds the gun, the man in the cell will be Porter. Oh, Zimmerman. Yeah. Tell me just what happened. Well, we were standing at the bars watching the kids. After they were gone, I turned around and he was dead. From this position, I'd say whoever shot him was across from this tier of cells. It couldn't be. There were just two burglar suspects and a drunk over there. Well, he can't get rid of the gun. Oh, he can, huh? Well, he did. You didn't find it? We went over every cell, convict and cranny with a fine-tooth comb and a mind detector. There's just two guns on this floor, mine and yours. All right, hand it over, Gough. Just a minute, Lieutenant. Hand it over, I said. Always happy to cooperate. Here. Now that you see it hasn't been fired, I'll just look at yours. Well, well, I mean it. Denver's wouldn't be the first police officer with a blot in his conscience. Hold, I ought to bash your face. Stop Make me. a pass and I'll flatten you, Denver's. All right, here. Check my gun, then get out. And if you ever make another crack like that, Gault, only one of us will walk away. to antagonize Lieutenant Denver? He's always suspicious of a possible connection with the syndicate. By making him mad, I took his mind off the syndicate angle. Now he just hates you for yourself. Well, apparently nobody there killed Bradbury. So I guess one of the six-year-olds did it. Uh, Ellen, that's it. Oh, now, Phil. They may go, with their toy gun. No, 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 no. I I mean, uh, Mrs. What's-her-name. She was the only adult there when Bradbury was killed who wasn't searched. Denver sent her and the kids away before the body was discovered. A woman murderer? If all the men killed by women were alive today, Ellen, there'd be a big increase in the male population. Yeah? I'm trying to locate a woman in the school district who has shown great interest in the children. Yeah, Mrs. Barvash is... That's the name. Yeah, two houses down, she lives. Splendid. No, here she is. Oh, but so fine she is. Sure she is. Yeah, that too. Uh, may I use your phone? Yeah, right here on the wall. It, it is? Lieutenant Andrews. I found the Barwise woman. Oh, uh, where? 900 block in Cohasset. I'll be right out. Don't do a thing till I get there. You 
You are listening to The Whisperer, the story of Philip Galt, who skirts the thin edges of danger living his dual role. Philip Galt, as the Whisperer, has passed on the orders of his superiors in the syndicate to a man named Porter to kill John Bradbury and George Zimmerman. Somehow, Porter managed to get into the jail, kill Bradbury, and conceal both his identity and the murder weapon. Now, Phil works to save Zimmerman, the man whose testimony the government needs to uncover higher-ups in the syndicate. Phil and Ellen approach the home of Mrs. Barwise. Are you sure Lieutenant Denver said to go ahead with your questioning? Ellen, how can you doubt me? It's no effort at all. Hello? Uh, uh, yes, <laughs> Uh, I'm Philip Galt, and I, I saw you... At the police station. I'm poor at remembering names, but I never forget a figure. Come in, Mr. Galt. <clears throat> and bring your mother with you. Oh, excuse me. This is Miss Morris. Uh, Norris. I came with you, remember? Won't you come in? No, thanks. Delighted. Mr. Galt, would you like an oatmeal cookie? Oh. Uh, I'd love one. And you, Mrs. Morris? Miss Norris. Oh, so sorry. Did you bake them? Of course. When? Why, this morning. Why, you were in jail? I was not in jail, Miss Morris. Oh, dear, would you excuse me? That dame and oatmeal cookies go together like a minnow and a hungry shark. Ellen. Well, she's guilty. I can tell by her perfume. Mr. Barwise, I'm Lieutenant Denver. Man was killed this morning while you were at the jail. And... Oh, and you wonder if I killed him. Is that why you came, Mr. Gold? Well, you see, I... Uh, would you mind coming down to headquarters? No, not at all. Mrs. Morris can ride back with you, Lieutenant, and I'll ride with Mr. Gold. Now, just a minute, I... And they find me not guilty. You, Mr. Gold, may bring me back home and tell me how sorry you are. <laughs> You, Mr. Galt, may bring me back home and tell me how sorry you are. I got news for her. I already know how sorry you are. You know, green becomes you, my dear. How long does it take to test for gunpowder stains on her claws? Oh, I apologize for this inconvenience. Oh, please, Lieutenant, you were only doing your duty. Ready, Mr. Galt? You mean she didn't do it? No, Miss Norris. No stains on her hands? None. Well, maybe she wore gloves. No, I distinctly remember she didn't wear gloves. You would. Well, there's nothing more I can do. Ready, Mr. Gore? Oh, yes. I mean, uh, Ellen, I, I, I'll see you at your place later. That was the understatement of the year. Half an hour later, Philip Galt lets Mrs. Barwise out in front of her home, drives to a variety store, makes a purchase, and tucking it in his belt, stops in front of Ellen's apartment, then goes in. Ellen. Well, it certainly took you long enough to deliver that man-eating blonde. Well, I hurried as fast as she'd let me. Well, wipe the oatmeal cookie crumbs off your chin and tell me what she said. Ellen, I won't stand for that kind of talk. Huh? The syndicate has found out about you. Oh, you're joking. They've ordered me to kill you. Phil! Get ready to die. Put down that gun. Goodbye, Ellen. <laughs> oh, what oh, cat pistol. Phil got out to throw something at you. <laughs> I will throw something no, at hey. you. No, oh, oh, hey. No. My best laugh, but it was worth it. Oh. Now, what's this all about? Holy smoke. If you, now, if you can calm down for just a minute. I, well. At first, the idea was too fantastic, but now I don't know. You thought this gun was real. Well, it looks exactly like a real one. Well, if that's true, then a real one would look like a cat pistol. Especially if a six-year-old child was wearing it in his holster. That's fantastic. Not if what I think is true is true. Operator, give me New York, circle 1798. Have you completely lost your mind? I'll know in a minute. Shh. There's need for special liquidator. Situation demands that killer be a midget. Bill, a midget? It's a bum guess. They never heard of such a killer. That means they didn't send one here to dress like a six-year-old and kill Bradbury and Zimmerman. Bill, how in the world could Porter or anyone for that matter get into that jail, shoot Bradbury, and then get rid of the gun without a clue? Ellen, unless we find the answer to that before tomorrow, the same thing will happen to Zimmerman. But who's Porter? Well, he can't be you, myself, 
Lieutenant Danvers, Mrs. Barweiss, or Zimmerman. But he could be one of those three men in the cells across from Zimmerman. Even that seems impossible. They've probably been in jail several days, and Porter was free this morning because I talked to him. Phil, there's one man we overlooked. Overlooked? Yes. Sergeant Oakes. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Denver sent him out at the same time he sent Mrs. Barweiss and those kids. Lieutenant Denver. Lieutenant, did you check Sergeant Oakes' gun? Sergeant Oakes? Why, I've known him for 15 years. I know, years. but why not make the tests and be sure? Gold, you're as crazy as a march hare. But all right, I'll do it. Thank you. I'm coming down to headquarters, Lieutenant. I want to be there when the report comes in. How could a police officer be Porter? Remember, Ellen, I've never seen Porter. If Sergeant Oakes is in the employ of the syndicate, he could have taken the message and then, during the excitement of those kids breaking the window, could have killed Bradbury. And no one would ever suspect a police officer of such a thing. I will soon know. After you. No, you. Now, what's wrong, Lieutenant? Here, read this. Results of paraffin test for pilot stain, Sergeant J.P. Oakes. Definite traces on right... Some and four. Oh, Phil. Walt, I've never been hit this hard. I would have staked my life on that man. What was his explanation? That he got him on the pistol range. Isn't that possible? No, uh, I couldn't take a chance, so I suspended him, put him under temporary detention, and sent his gun to ballistics for a check against the murder slug we recovered from Bradbury's cell. Well, how soon will the report... Yeah? You did? Proves it, huh? All right, thanks. Tests prove he did it? No. Happy to say they prove he did not. Well, then who could have done it? Until now, I've never believed in Gremlin. But now, no, I'm not so sure. Faced with a murder in which apparently none of those present could possibly have been guilty, Philip Galt decides to make further inquiries about the only logical outside suspect, Mrs. Barwise. Back in the 8th Elementary School District, he knocks on a familiar door. Yeah. I'm back with more questions about the Barweiss family. Uh, there is a Mr. Barweiss, isn't there? Yeah. Such a happy man he is. Singing always he is. Have you seen him today? Yeah, only this morning I see him. About what time? The 915 bus he called. Why you not ask Mrs. Barweiss? Well, I tried to, but no one answered my knock. Oh, yeah. Of course, now I remember. Another bunch of kids she takes to visit the jail. When? When did she leave? It makes almost an hour now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, what happened to you? Go in scowling and come out in a merry mood? I've been working on the rain. I prefer Gordon McRae. Oh, Ellen, my dear, it all just fell into place. Now, if we hurry, I think we can deliver Lieutenant Denver's one murderer. Caught, as I believe the expression is, red-handed. While Phil and Ellen speed toward the jail, hoping to prevent the murder of George Zimmerman, Mrs. Barwise and Lieutenant Denvers are engaged in heated conversation. For the last time, no, you cannot make another tour. Last time you went up there, a man was killed. But you proved that I didn't do it, Lieutenant. Well, I'm taking no chances. Now, you just stay here. Oh. Hello, Lieutenant. Mrs. Barwise. Now what? Are we having another tour? Mrs. Barwise isn't. What do you mean by that? I'm holding her here. What about the children? I sent them on the tour with Sergeant Oak. How long ago? Oh, five, ten minutes. Mrs. Barwise, do you mind if I look in your purse? I certainly do. Why bother, Galt? As long as she and the purse are here, they can't do any harm. I'm sorry, Mrs. Barwise, but Give I... Give me back that purse. It's none of your business. Look. A gun. A gun? <laughs> it's nothing but a cap pistol. Were any of those prisoners across the corridor from Zimmerman admitted today? Yeah, that happy drunk. We picked him up about ten this morning. Oh, relax, Galt. There's nothing to worry about. There's just one thing, Lieutenant. Unless we reach the fifth floor before those kids do, that happy drunk is going to kill George Zimmerman. What? Come on. Well, where would he get a gun? From his wife. But no one's visited him. His name is Barwise. That's his wife in your office. Well, he said his name was Porter when we booked him. But she still hasn't been up there. There's no gun in his cell. That I know. One will get you 20. He has one by the time we got there. You mean he shot Bradbury? Yes, and Zimmerman's next. Hey... There's Porter at the cell door. He has a gun. Porter! Porter dropped that gun. Hello? I let him have it! Good shooting goal. Sergeant Oaks, get those kids out of here. Wait. Line them up against the wall while we check on Zimmerman. I'm all right. 
Salvar got in the way of his first shot. Why keep the kid? I'll show you. They're all lined up, Lieutenant. More or less. Good. Now, six cowboys in the group wearing their toy guns. Oh, no. Oh, yes. This fellow here has an empty holster. Look, Galt, give it to me easy. I still don't believe it. It's diabolically simple, Lieutenant. Barweiss, or Porter, as he called himself, got picked up on a drunk charge, so he'd be put across from Bradbury and Zimmerman. His wife brought the kids, and during the tour, removed a toy gun from this little fellow's holster and substituted a real one. It was so obvious, no one would think of checking each kid's holsters. And that's why we found a cap pistol in her handbag? Yes. Remember, Barweiss, or Porter, knows all these kids. He called the youngster over to his cell. Then Mrs. Barwise broke the window, centering everyone's attention on that. Like the rest of us, the youngster turned to look. Barwise killed Bradbury, slipped the gun back into the holster, and when you drove the kids out of the tier, there went your murder gun. But, Galt, wouldn't the kid notice something? Not necessarily, Lieutenant. The gun has a silencer. And remember, to a six-year-old, all real guns are toys, and all toy guns are real. <laughs> They did it, Ellen. It took clever people to think up such a plot. Now, the syndicate pays well for brains. But now Zimmerman will testify, and one more link of the syndicate will be exposed. And that's good, too. For if you break enough small links, someday the entire chain becomes useless. All of which leaves me consumed with hunger. You owe me food. Well, as soon as I report to the syndicate, you shall have it. Uh, oatmeal cookies. But not baked by Mrs. Barwise. Where she's going, they'd scorch. Central City reporting. Porter bungled job and was killed. Impossible to prevent Zimmerman's testimony. For new instructions, I will call Chicago at midnight. The Whisperer is based upon stories and characters created by Stetson Humphrey. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Carlton Young is starred as The Whisperer. Betty Moran is Ellen. Others in the cast were Betty Lou Gerson, Paul Fries, Julius Kralbein, Dan Riss, and Bob Anderson. The Whisperer was written, produced, and directed by Bill Carn. Original music by Johnny Duffy. Your announcer has been Don Rickles. Next week, listen to another exciting adventure with... Blood victims in Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Illinois need your help. The President of the United States has asked us, the American people, to contribute $5 million through our local chapters of the American Red Cross for the relief of these citizens' needs that are staggering. The job of the Red Cross is going to take a lot of money, more than the Red Cross can provide from its present resources. You can do your part by contributing generously to the Flood Relief Fund through your local Red Cross chapter. Don't wait. Do it now. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.